morning. I'm John Carrington. And I'm Lil Reed. And we're going to interview Senator Lisa Gladden. We're going to have a great time, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of Top of the Morning. And since you didn't make it on American Idol with all your musical <laughs> talents, uh, you decided to become a senator. And uh, well, what is that life like? Is that different from being an American Idol? I've met Randy, <laughs> I've met Simon, okay. and I'm sure I've met Paula somewhere in, in Annapolis. It's, it's a difficult job, mm -hmm. and I would believe that the most difficult part is just responding to all the needs of the people both in my district and outside of my district. I, I'm serious about what I do, and so when someone calls, even at midnight, if I'm in the office, I answer the phone. So yeah. it's, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's rewarding because it's a job that needs to be done. All right now, outline your district. Uh, quickly. I am Northwest Baltimore City. If you look at the city of Baltimore and you look at a backwards, backwards upside down L, I am the left hand, I guess the left hand, top left hand side. It's Northwest Baltimore City. It includes everything from Charles Street all the way down to Edmondson Avenue, Edmondson Village, all the way to the county line. I represent Falls Road, the, the community all the way to the end of Falls Road, Smith Avenue, all the way to the end. Um, I have uh, Roland Park, um, all the way to Hunting Ridge, to Ten Hills, to Edmondson Village, to Park Heights, Ashburton, where I live, and, um, and, and wonderful neighborhoods in between Cold Spring, uh, Cold Spring. And what I say is, I'm proud of Baltimore because of the communities that I represent. I'm, I'm a better senator because I have great, great constituents, so I'm proud of it. Well, yeah, I applaud you. 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 you have a lot going on in that area of, I'm the, trying. of the state. Yeah, sure, trying. Have you grown up here all your life? I am born and bred in Baltimore City. Um, I was born um, in East Baltimore. My mother walked to Johns Hopkins um, when she believed that she was in labor with me. Wow. Walked and two hours later she had a girl. Wow. And um, my father was raised here. He had 18 brothers and sisters. Wow. And he went to Dunbar High School. Mm -hmm. um, so my family is very connected to East Baltimore and to West Baltimore. Was raised in West Baltimore. Um, went to schools like Hilton Elementary School, Falstaff Middle School. Mm -hmm great place, the School 36, School 157. I went a lot of different places, but I'm, I'm proud of the fact that all those places landed me at Duke University. Um, left Duke and became a lawyer. I came back here to law school. This is a great place and the opportunities. I, there's nothing that you can't do if you have the right foundation and you get it here in Baltimore. I believe it. What has been the highlight of your career as a senator? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm sure people were laughing about that. Um, to be honest, I think one of the highlights was uh, last year I introduced or reintroduced um, the repeal of the death penalty legislation. I, have, I had introduced it for years and years before, and then for that matter, former delegates uh, Salim Asala Marriott had introduced it. And last year I introduced the bill, and the governor showed up to support wow. the bill. Wow. And it, it brought energy, and it brought a tremendous amount of, of, um, of uh, uh, I, I think seriousness to the issue and so I was shocked when I, when I saw him there I, I couldn't believe that a sitting governor would come out and support repealing the death penalty and he's an attorney so he understands sort of the, uh, the intellectual issues about why it's not a good thing and, and why it's, there's no, um, you know we had crime problem in Baltimore, the death penalty is not a deterrent to crime, it has never been, it's an expensive way that some people feel good about just getting even. But uh, when, when, when Governor Malik stepped up, I, I was, I, I think it was one of the high points of my own career. All right. Our city and our state need leadership uh, regarding fiscal, money, budget matters. Mm -hmm. What is the answer? What is the answer? Yeah. 
show me the money. Yeah. You know I, what? I, it's funny. The federal government can make their own money. When they get mm -hmm. short, they can just print some new stuff. Mm -hmm. It just it devalues the value of the, of the American dollar. The reality is that Marylanders as a whole need to, need to understand that we have got to pay for great services and that good government only comes if we pay for it. And that while I'm not necessarily saying you have to increase taxes, but I do think people have to pay their own share. And so perhaps in 1960, the wealthiest of our community paid more than they do today. We need to sort of tell people, this is our community, this is our responsibility, and in order to get to that point, sometimes we have to pay for it. So while I don't necessarily tell you that we need to always increase taxes, but understand that we've got to pay for this and that in order to pay for some of the things that we love and that we want so you know whether it's cleaning the harbor or it's it's improving our schools we need money to do that and the government only gets money from taxes all right there you go you're a one person fundraiser no i no i'm i'm begging for money for my constituents and and you have to go to the to the source of power and when you have a mayor who is responsive you have to ask for what you need. Now, what's interesting is that the tax base here in the, in the city of Baltimore is very low, and the way that we re, that we increase it is that we increase homeowners, and that we, we bring more people who can pay more to, to our tax base so that we can improve the school system, so that we can build the rec centers. It's interesting because just today, it I had a conversation with, with Helen Holton, who has been instrumental in creating and building a brand new gymnasium in Edmondson Village. I built the rec center part, ran out of money, talk about asking for more money, and it was at that point that Helen stepped up with, um, with, the, with at that time, Mayor O'Malley, and was able to get a commitment for a million dollars for a brand new rec center. We're gonna break ground the last part of August, and this will be the first new rec center in Baltimore City in 25 years. And while, while I think that that's a high point, that's a high point for our community. I'm, I'm so excited about that. What a great contribution. It is awesome, it is awesome. Right. So you mentioned your constituents. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Who are your constituents? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My mother says, Lisa, you represent everybody. I said, no, I have a fifth of the district of the city. Um, my communities um, are very diverse. I represent um, and a largely African American community, about seventy percent. But I also represent the largest Orthodox Jewish community outside of New York wow. City. And so. Um, we have a responsibility to recognize that um, there is very that the, our differences are not that great, and that our needs are very similar, and that in order to build a strong community, we need to recognize and build on our strengths and, and our unities. And so, I have a great community, and I have a great district. Well, speaking of community, half of it's here at the top of the World Trade Center, and they're talking and having a great time looking at this beautiful city. And you say your area extends into uh, the Park Heights and uh, yes. Pikesville area. And you, you cover a lot of ground there. You also have Pimlico Racetrack. Mm -hmm. Is that a potential cash cow well, for the entire you, state? I, well, you know what? If it's a cash cow for the entire state, it's going to be two cash cows in <laughs> Park Heights and, and Pimlico. The reality is you, we can't help the rest of the state until we help ourselves first. And so I have, and I've been on record, I support slots at Pimlico. Mm -hmm. I will continue to support slots at Pimlico as long as our communities are, are enriched by the potential of having gaming in, in Maryland. And, and while there's been some discussions about not doing it here, I have introduced legislation year and year. I even introduced legislation last year that said, if slots come to Baltimore, the money still has to go back to the Park Heights P Pimlico community. <laughs> and someone said in the committee, do you mean if slots aren't at Pimlico, you still want the money? Yep, I <laughs> sure do. That's right. And so, and because the money is, so incredible and it's interesting that you would raise this question and I'm, I'm extraordinarily passionate about about finding new revenue sources for for uh, the city of Baltimore yeah. I have I believe that the slots may be a, may be an option and if there's an issue about well it's going to be bad for the community we already have bad we already have bad schools we have we have bad a, a terrible environment in terms in terms of air quality and water quality and so let's not argue about about what's bad for the community if we don't have at least if I believe if if, if there's money associated with it because if you build it they'll come we'll fix our community we'll make it safer we'll make it stronger and we can do that with slides. We are interviewing Senator Lisa Gladden and uh, Senator Gladden has a wealth of information that she's going to share 
and uh, uh, I'm going to let Lil ask the questions. Oh, okay. Senator, what's it really like to work in the Senate? I mean, like, how far do you have to walk to the ladies' room, you know? Give us the dirt. Well, you know what's so funny? I am in the Vice Chairman's Office of Judicial Proceedings Committee. I have my own restaurant. Oh, right. And so, I, and it's amazing because they're, they're, um, the Senate offices are, in, are arranged in suites, and so there's one restroom for men and one for women, and I've never been in those experiences because I've always been in, in, a, um, in the leadership uh, suite. So I don't know, because you always have your own <laughs> restroom. However, I, I'd offer this as just a piece of advice. Um, I taught at Rutgers one year at, for the Center of American Women in Politics, and the best piece of advice that I offer to women who are interested in politics or even interested in any kind of public service that may have some election stuff associated with it, start early. Women don't start early enough because what I'm noticing is that I may be the youngest woman in the Senate, and I am, by almost 10 years. Wow. And I'm 42. Wow. And so when I notice that the guys are 30, the young guys are 30, not a lot of 30 year olds, but there are a few, that we have got to start earlier as women. We don't, and because we don't start early enough as women, we end up missing some of the, I, I think, some of the maturation process that you need if you want to be a public servant in, in, in politics in particular. Now I know it, it's important to sort of have all of your other pieces in mind, like you want to get school out the way, you want to get married, you want to have kids, but all of those things can, can be simultaneous activities. And, and, and if, you have, if you wish to pursue politics, starting your dreams. And whether it's it's working on campaigns and doing that behind the scenes or in front, start early. And so in the Senate, it's difficult because because everybody's old. I'll just be honest. I mean, the people like they they are old, and and old. How about this? Older. Older. <laughs> older. They're old as dirt. Me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, I, I tell you what. I mean, I I love politics. You know, and every now and then you go on the internet and you see these little uh, uh, quotes and rumors and grapevine feeds. Uh, uh, there's something about somebody could become a, a, a president if somebody got impeached and and then of course that person who became president ended up being a female we'd have our first female president. Would that Did you be, see that yet on the internet? Wouldn't that be like the alumna from IND um, from perhaps um, a school here in Baltimore that that lady is that <laughs> it could have been IND lady? Yeah, it could have been. Look, um, <laughs> if they impeach Bush and they impeach uh, Cheney, which would not be a bad thing. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be. The question is, do you get rid of them? And if you think about it, they impeached Clinton, and, and it really doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. And so I, there's a lot of chatter about that. Uh, it'd be, be a, uh -huh. interesting, if not even a spectacular event. I think it kind of takes away from what's happening in the national politics as it relates to the election. I, I had a beautiful conversation with Newt Gingrich um, last week at a conference um, in, in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I asked him the question, what are the Democrats doing right because you know we're going to win in 08? He said, you're right, you are going to win in 08. And it's not because of what you've done, it's because of what Bush has done. And if, that, if that's the belief that he wants to hold true to, that, that, we're, that our candidates are not as good as, as Bush is bad, I'm fine with it. It means that we're going to have a Democratic, uh, we're going to have a Democratic president. That's great. I, I think I think that at least you have a, the architect sort of of some of the Republican um, victories um, in, in in early 2000. For him to say that the Democrats is going to win, I think that's that's a wonderful wonderful um, indicator that we're doing the right thing. So if we put, if they impeach Bush, he's going to be around. He's going to be there to the end. And Cheney, he's going to be there to the end. And so, you know, I, I'd like to see this. Why isn't he not running for president? Why is Cheney not running for president? Uh, health concerns. Also, it's hot in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 His approval rating is lower than Bush's. And he, he recognizes he can't, he, he can't run. And he can say health concerns if he wants, but yeah. I'll tell you, they, they sick a of bad heart. Bad ticker. Yeah, yeah he does. No. I, I, I'm not buying it. Oh, well, well what, what I'm really uh, concerned about is the uh, leadership that, that helps us to move towards a better state and a better city. Um, when are we going to have um, uh, a Governor Gladden? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you, I've never been stumped. That was a great, great question. Now let me tell you this. I have on my lawn a sign that says, our community, our responsibility. 
we're going to have all of these things that people dream of when we take responsibility for our communities. And so I've stepped to the plate, I've taken responsibility, I've, I've, I've run for office. And so the reality is that everybody has to do something, whether you volunteer in a school, or whether you pick up trash that you see on the street, or whether you just make sure that when you see kids on the street and they need mentoring, you decide to mentor them. We each need to take responsibility for the city that we want and for the state that we want. You cannot do that unless you take you take it for yourself. Are you announcing your run now? No, but I'll come back and I'll do that. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, my father's principal at Dunbar, he used to say, if it is to be, it's up to me. That's true. And if it is to be, it's always up to us. And so you've got to f figure out what it is you've got to do, whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera. We have so much stuff that we can do. We just got to put ourselves out there to do it. All I right. believe it. And your platform would be? Um, top of the morning. And my platform <laughs> <laughs> public access television. Public that, access that, television. It is, right. it is important that you know if you She's two can friend. can if you two can. I'm do voting a debate, for you. You know they can do a debate that that has you know gotten gotten the attention of everywhere around the world. It suggests to me that people want to speak. Public access is a way to do that, and so I don't see any problem with that. I, I think it's it's something we ought to focus on, and I think kids particularly want more media issues. And they want to be able to be involved in it. So I'd vote for you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I vote too. Oh my God, I have two votes. Well, I have three because I have my mom too. Because there's a lot going on in in, in 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 life, and there's a lot going on in the state of Maryland, and of course, Senator Gladden, you're right in the middle of everything that's happening. Uh, what are your thoughts? at this moment in the uh, political season, the climate of the state, climate of the world? That's an interesting question that could take an hour to answer, but um, I think that Baltimore is going in the right direction. I think that we see an uptick. I love going down 83 and seeing the cranes because it says to me that we're building and we're preparing for a future. I like the fact that across the city, there are people who are committed to doing great things for the city, all, all over the city. You see small things or great things. I, I look at my community people who call all the time, Lisa, I'm working on this, I'm working on that. I love that. The mentoring project where one state's attorney says, I'm going to mentor to a dozen kids, where he takes them out every Saturday, someplace different. I thank you, Steve Mitchell, for that. And I, I see that Baltimore is going in the right direction, I think, as we move towards the next, perhaps the next uh, decade for Baltimore, I think you're going to see great things. You're going to see new and innovative leadership with Stephanie and with all of those members of the City Council who really want to see the very best for Baltimore. I really do. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I, I, can't, I can't wait to see the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Senator, being a public servant takes a lot of hard work. Why don't you tell us one of your war stories of how you got started? Well, that's interesting because I, I didn't tell anyone I was going to run for the House of Delegates. You didn't? No. I didn't even tell my mother, who I live with. And my mom <laughs> found out from someone who came by and said, you know, Lisa went down to Annapolis and she filed for the House of Delegates. I didn't tell anybody. So I got home from work and she said, did you do something that you didn't tell me about? I said, yeah. And then Senator Blount, after a number of conversations, we spoke and he said, I want you to take a highlighter and a map and I want you to cover the district. Well, that's not the most precise way of finding voters. But I, I got three friends. I had Dina, I had Lisa, and I had Jeff. And, and we got in the back of Jeff's truck, and we walked the district with a highlighter and a map and, and a dog. And, and, and did what we had to do to get voters to understand that politics is important, that the government is important, and that I was a person who was going to help them get achieve some of the goals that we need to achieve in the city of Baltimore. So it was fun, but I'm telling you, it was, it was three friends, a highlighter, and a map, and that was it, and a big <laughs> truck where we all jumped into it. And I thank them every day. I thank them for the work that they've done over well, there. I want to thank Lisa Gladden, Senator Lisa Gladden, for being a part of Top of the Morning. Thank you. And uh, as always, I'm John Carrington. <laughs> I'm Will Reed. You're not the right one. And this is Top of the morning. I, I'm not the right one. There's a giant character who's a minister and she thought I was the one. She took one look at me and heard what I was talking about. She said, that's not him. <laughs> well, anyway, this is Top of the Morning. We, until next time, uh, Top of the Morning. <laughs> Thank you. Come back.